Hey everyone, um, this is the Imperishable Sammy Zenith. Um, I'm uh, here in Pittsburgh right now um, with uh, one of my friends, Ozzy. He's uh, he's over here. Yep, there he comes. Yeah. Um, so uh, this is my first video in a little while. Um, since we last talked, I uh, celebrated my 22nd birthday. Um, so. Uh, I think what I could do with this video is I could maybe make it like, um, instead of one video, maybe more like two videos in one. I'm gonna try and keep it pretty short. I don't want to ramble on too long about that. So, um, yeah, uh, let's just delve right into it. Um, well, on my 22nd birthday, I went to a restaurant, um, called Paleo Soul. And I just want to review that today. Um, so... Uh, yeah, at Paleo Soul, um, they have all sorts of, like, um, grilled meats and grilled veggies, um, I, I normally eat, like, vegetarian most of the time, but, um, uh, for that specific instance, I had, um, I had, a uh, grilled salmon, it was like a blackened salmon, um, and, uh, that was pretty good, uh, and, uh, I also had, um, on the side, it was, uh, sweet potatoes, and, uh, most of the things on their menu are, uh, paleo, which pretty much means, like, uh, you know, of natural origin, like, they don't, uh, process it in a factory that much, so, um, it's a lot better for you, uh, and, uh, those two things I mentioned I had, that's not even all they have, like, um, my mom, she ordered, like, uh, what, what you call it? Salmon cakes, which, um, are kind of like crab cakes, which I've also had before. Um, so yeah, and, and uh, um, they also have, like, uh, other sorts of grilled veggies, like, um, broccoli, cauliflower, carrots, stuff like that. Um, and, uh, the kinds of meats they have are, you know, very, like, diverse in their selection too, like, um, turkey legs, I know my grandpa would like that, turkey legs, um, they have that, um, what else do they have, uh, I, I, I think I saw they had, like, um, pork chops, and, uh, I, I bet, I bet all of it's really good, I need to go back sometime, um, and try out more, more of their food, but, um, yeah, it's just like a small restaurant. I don't know if it's just the one that they have or if they have like uh, multiple restaurants in like Indianapolis or something, the Indianapolis region. Uh, I mean, I don't expect there to be any around here because I'm in, like I said, I'm in Pittsburgh right now. So um, I doubt it extends that far. But um, uh, yeah, uh, if you're ever in Indianapolis, I recommend going there. It's off, uh, 96th Street. It's sort of close to, uh, where I'm living at now. Um, it might, where my apartment is. So, um, yeah, I, I would, yeah, if I had to rate it, I, I would say, um, I would say definitely a solid 9 out of 10 for it. Um, and, uh, even with the pandemic going on, you're, you're still allowed to, sit down there, of course, they still have, like, social distancing rules and everything, um, but yeah, as, as long as you, like, go inside with a mask, you can just take it off and, uh, you know, eat your food, obviously, I mean, you know, you kind of have to have your mask off in order to eat things, it's, unless you can somehow phase it through your mask somehow, that's, uh, one of the powers I have, actually. I'm not going to demonstrate it, though. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I, I, I would say I definitely liked it. I'll, I'll have to go back again and try, try out more of the things that they have. But, um, uh, yeah, usually, like, my favorite kinds of, uh, meat are, like, seafood. So, um, yeah, I, I, I would have to see what other kinds of seafood they have. Um, I, I think I saw they also have tilapia, so, um, yeah, maybe, maybe that's something I could try next time. Uh, 
but yeah, um, I definitely recommend it. It's like a, and you know, always good to like help out smaller businesses rather than like, you know, like that you have certain places that like, you know, they're like really widespread and everything and everybody talks about it. It's like they probably have billions of dollars. It's like, you know, they don't really need those places don't really need my money, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, anyways, uh, yeah, that was my thoughts on that. Um, hopefully that, um, you know, spreads the word about it a bit and helps them out a bit. Um, that would be cool. Uh, yeah, honestly, it, 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 would, it would be cool if they even, like, let me work there. I don't know. <laughs> um, because right now I work at a place called Greek's Pizza. I've worked there about, uh, two years. It, it's been nearly two years. Uh, and that's where I currently work at. Um, but anyways, I think I'm gonna change the subject to something else now. Um, uh, because I don't want to make this video too long. But I'll make it kind of like two in one. Um... I'm going to talk about Dragon Ball Super as of late. Um, yeah. Oh, we're kind of just, like, wandering into the woods right now. <laughs> you could say this is even, like, maybe sort of a vlog-style video. Um, but, uh, not really. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking about when I go into town later, like, downtown Pittsburgh, possibly doing a vlog there. But, um, we'll see about that. Anyways, um... Yeah, uh, with Dragon Ball Super, um, the last time I made a video about it was, like, maybe five to six months ago, and obviously there have been a lot of developments in, um, the Galactic Patrol Prisoner Saga since then. Um, I honestly thought Vegeta was going to get the win. Like, I thought he was going to be the, the deciding factor in this arc, and he still could be, you know? It's not over just yet. It, it's gonna wrap up soon. You know, I, I expect the next Dragon Ball Super arc to start up maybe a, around, like, December or January. Like, I, I, I think it's gonna... I think Galactic Patrol Prisoner is gonna come to an end soon, and hopefully it, they adapt it to the anime. I, I like them I like them to announce that Jump Festa, because I think it's about time. You know, I think a lot of people would like to see a return of the anime or possibly even a new movie. Just something like that. Um, but, uh, yeah, with, um, with the, as far as the manga is concerned, um, yeah, obviously a lot of things have happened, you know, um, you, you've got Moro absorbing 7-3 into himself, um, and then, you know, he pretty much bodied all the Z fighters, like, there was just, there was just no contest really <laughs> um and then uh you have Maris sacrificing his life um to basically teach Goku to master Ultra Instinct and that ended up happening and uh more uh Goku pretty much uh you know kicked kicked Moro's butt um <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna use swear words in here, but, uh, yeah, um, and then, uh, in the latest chapter, um, Goku tried to spare Moro's life, um, cause he's, he's done that in the past, let's be honest, it's not, like, really out of character for Goku. I know that, like, ticked a lot of people off, but, honestly, I didn't dislike the latest chapter, actually, I, I... I know, I'm still liking the arc overall. I would say, I would agree that it's, um, not one of the strongest chapters of this arc. Possibly one of the weakest, but still, just, I, I know, I, I thought it was memorable, and I don't think it was, I really don't think it was that out of character for Goku. Because, it's like, you gotta consider everything that's happened since then, you know? He was, he was able to make, like literal deities into his friends, like, the Omni King, Beerus, I mean, sure, there've, you know, there've been some things to come out of that, like, Zeno, 
erasing trunks timeline uh i mean the omni king erasing trunks uh own timeline and uh also nearly erasing all of all of the universes in his own timeline as in goku's the the main timeline that we're familiar with um yeah that i mean that did all happen of, of course but i mean I know, I, I think Goku still sees the Omni King as, as his friend, and same with, like, Beerus and Whis and everything, um, and, and, like, you know, with Cell, he wasn't able to redeem Cell, but he wasn't more powerful than Cell, he had a lot of faith in Gohan to do that, and that ended up working, even though he wanted Gohan to destroy Cell, um, that was because, you know, it was Gohan, not, not himself, you know, he, it, he, like, he doesn't expect Gohan to, like, turn Cell into his friend, so the best choice at the time, especially since Cell is basically just a killing machine, you know, he's, he's not really, like, you know, someone who can be befriended. I mean, I guess you could say Android 17 and 18 were too, but they were human-based, you know. Cell is literally just, you know, a monster that was created by, uh, you know, Dr. Jero through artificial means, so. Um, and then with Piccolo, it's like, yeah, back then Piccolo Jr. was not pure evil, of course. Like, he was, I, I he was evil, but only because, like, he was the reincarnation of King Piccolo, and, um, yeah, you know, but, but, I mean, he was able to redeem Piccolo, and so you can kind of see where, like, his philosophy comes from. I don't think there have really been any events to change Goku's philosophy, honestly. It, like, killing Boo, for instance, like... Well, part of Boo is still alive, first of all. And second, even Kid Boo got reincarnated go because Goku didn't want Boo's potential to go to waste. So, he's just never been like that. He He's always believed that somehow, like, anyone can be, like, redeemed. And, you know, uh, you know, sort of, like, uh, grow to be more like him, you know, just trying to better themselves that's pretty much the good he sees in everyone so i don't know why people are so like surprised by that you know what i mean uh, but yeah um i mean you know i i could go off in a longer tangent about this um i didn't dislike the latest chapter though and, and not just for that, but the, you know, the fights, the fighting itself was really good. I mean, yeah, of course, it's not all about fighting. Um, but, I mean, you have to admit, you know, that, you know, just, just the way they, you know, brought back, uh, uh, the, it, it was, it was pretty much like, what, what do they call that? Chekhov's gun? Um, that sort of, um, trope where, you know, something is alluded to earlier but it's very subtle but then it comes back later and ends up being a really um big turning point um that was pretty much when in, in this instance Maris cut off Moro's hand that uh copied Maris's abilities and Moro was able to find that hand and reattach it so that's pretty much what happened and um I thought that was very interesting and Moro even ended up using Ultra Instinct briefly, but Ultra Instinct is more of like a mind-body-spirit technique, and obviously Moro, uh, you know, hasn't, doesn't really have what it takes for Ultra Instinct, neither physically, uh, mentally, or spiritually, so it's like, that's probably why it ended up backfiring on him. Um, so... Yeah, um, I, but I thought that was pretty cool, and him becoming one of the planets, so almost like, um, you know, 
Ego the Living Planet uh, from Guardians of the Galaxy. That's it's it's kind of like that, and I I kind of like um, seeing like those kinds of things manifest, like those kinds of ideas manifesting into Dragon Ball Super, just doing their own version of it. Because I mean, really, really, even just the whole concept of Moro being like this planet eater, it's it's very reminiscent of like something from Marvel Comics, and I and I kind of like that. Um, except, uh, you know, Moro's a bit more, like, he's, he has more, like, magical abilities, but still. Um, yeah, with, 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 uh, you know, as far as my overall opinions, like, I, I don't know, I, I guess Moro fusing with 7-3, I guess it was a good and bad thing, you know, there certain, like, plot twists to come out of it that I really liked and thought were interesting, but at the same time, you know, I, I, you know, I, I felt like Moro would be like this, you know, different type of enemy that, uh, the Z fighters have never faced before, and in a way he has, but, you know, he's, you know, like, made it so that Goku and Vegeta had to think outside the box a bit and use their smarts to defeat Moro, but at the same time, um, you know, I feel like him fusing, uh, Moro fusing with 7-3 made him feel more like a Cell type of threat, you know, like, you know, a, like, almost an Android type of threat rather than, like, you know, a, like, a magical sort of being, you know. I mean, his ability to, like, copy any technique is definitely a very neat, like, hacks ability, but I know, I was hoping, like, Mora would reveal, like, some more, like, uh, magical abilities that we, that we w wouldn't be expecting, rather than, you know, just, like, absorbing more energy and becoming more powerful. I feel like, I know, that's just kind of cliche, I guess, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I would say, like, I've still been liking the recent chapters, and again, like, with Vegeta, he could still be the deciding factor. Like, Moro's literally fused himself with planet Earth, and what does spirit fission do? It, it fissions anything. Like, you know, it splits apart fusions, it can reverse uh, energy absorption, and just all these things. So, you know, I think, I feel like Vegeta, all he has to literally do is maybe, like, punch the ground a few times and uh, unfuse Moro from the Earth. So, he could still be the deciding factor in everything, and it would be great if he got, like, the finishing blow. Um... I mean, at, at this point, I think he pretty much could, despite how powerful Moro 7-3 is. Like, Moro's literally on the verge of, you know, self-destructing. So, um, yeah, I feel like, I feel like anyone could defeat him at this point. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, um, that would be great, you know, because I don't think Vegeta's ever gotten a finishing blow on um, a villain. So, um, this video is nearing 20 minutes in length. I think I'm gonna wrap it up soon. Um, sorry, it's all been s sort of like a jumbled mess, you know, like, uh, <laughs> just, just cause so much has happened in recent months with the Dragon Ball Super manga, and not just that, but everything, like, life in general, I guess. So, um, those are my thoughts on a Dragon Ball Super manga as of late. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I thought some of the, um, plot twists that happened were actually pretty good. Like, um, you know, like, uh, Maris's sacrifice, I was, like, possibly the most, um, possibly, like, the saddest moment in Dragon Ball Super so far. So, um, yeah. Uh, and, you know, like, in the anime, I'd be interested to see them, like, um, expand upon more, more things that, you know, that, that were briefly highlighted in, as far as the manga. 
was is concerned, but of course, just because uh, the manga is, it's a little bit like it's supposed to be like more fast paced. I'm sure they don't get to uh, delve into everything. So yeah, I'm gonna wrap up this video. Um, Ozzy's just been chilling around here this whole time. Uh, but yeah, um, we are going into town pretty soon so we're gonna do that and uh yeah i'm going to wrap up this video here uh do you have anything you want to say to my audience hi <laughs> <laughs> yeah he also has a youtube channel of his own i'll link in the description um and uh yeah um thank you all for watching and uh yeah again it's uh, my first video in five months so uh hopefully um it was worth it i guess i know anyways uh yeah, peace out. Um, expect more videos soon, maybe, possibly, in uh, 20 years. <laughs> Alright, see ya.